team Finish Strong. Today is going to be my first video log for Finish Strong. And as fitting for a first video log, I'm going to be participating in my first Zwift Community League race. Now, Zwift is a really exciting platform. A lot of people participating from amateurs all the way up to pros. Um, some of you may have been following the Zwift uh, Super League races and uh, very exciting to watch. Uh, got some favorites that I root for on Wednesdays in that, that uh, event. And um, what's interesting about the Zwift Community League is that this is not an invitation only event, but is open to the entire Zwift community. And so as such, I'm gonna be participating for the first time. I'm gonna try my hand at this and see how it goes. All right, folks, and we're here at the starting line of the Zwift Community League race. This is week three in the series, and it is an E category race, which means that all categories are combined, A, B, C, and D. Uh, we've got a couple of pros riding here today, as well as some amateurs, including myself, and we're just about ready to begin. And as we begin, go ahead and get off to a very quick start. Um, it's very important with these mass start races to start quick and put out a good bit of power. Um, otherwise, you find yourself either being dropped altogether or so far back in the pack that you're not going to be in contention to winning your category. I am a C category rider, and uh, from what I understand with this particular race, the way it works itself out is that it's going to look at your uh, Zwift Power Profiles category rating to determine uh, where your standings are at the end of the race. And so we're uh, riding here. The Peloton's starting to string out, as would be expected in a quick start such as this. And I'm just trying to find my place in the Peloton, find a group that I can sit in with, be comfortable, relatively speaking, sitting in. Um, and that's what we're doing. And uh, as you can see here, there's a number of riders all trying to find out uh, where they can advance. Uh, sometimes uh, you can bridge up to another group. Um, this race, I found, that was not um, to be the case for me. Um, the pace was so high that I felt I needed to just stay um, with one group fairly early on and maintain that throughout the race. Um, as you can see here, later on in the race, uh, it's settled into a fairly consistent rhythm. I'm with a small group, about five or six folks, um, that uh, were similarly uh, ranked, I guess you could say, in terms of our category, our performance. And um, where I found that the uh, race tended to uh, thin the groups out was on the one climb that the, that the course has. This is the Innsbruck course, and it has one notable climb that's uh, about a minute long. And uh, during that climb is usually when people can either make a break um, or bridge perhaps up to a, uh, a group that's farther ahead. Uh, in this particular case, um, the groups were so thinned out that there really wasn't um, any chance to bridge. You either had to make an attack and uh, break out on your own or just stick with the group that you were with. Uh, I chose to work with the group that I was with uh, rather than um, doing any kind of attacks and looking to advance. Um, it just didn't seem to make sense given um, the amount of time there was between our group and the next. Um, it did find out that uh, during the race, we picked up some stragglers along the way that had fallen off of groups that were ahead of us. And so our group swelled to about six to ten folks um, at one point during the middle of the race. However, as we, uh, as we uh, made each of those climbs, it turned out uh, we ended up losing some of those folks again, um, which resulted in us coming down to a group, small group of about four or five for most of the race. And that's kind of what you see here, um, just taking turns on the front, doing pulls, and then falling back and resting with the group, trying to conserve energy. Um, we worked pretty well together. I was really surprised at uh, how cooperative um, the group were. There were um, a couple folks um, in each group that were willing to do a fair share of the work. Of course, there's always a couple of folks that weren't willing to do any of the work, just wanted to uh, sit in. But um, as it turned out, as we got farther into the race, those folks ended up dropping off, um, on, particularly on the climb. And so, as we transition here, this uh, portion of the race that you're looking at is the climb. And um, 
we were averaging about 300 watts or about four watts per kilogram up these climbs in the group that I was in, um, give or take a little bit here or there, which was pretty good for me. And that was um, about 120% of my threshold power. So um, I was very comfortable doing that, had uh, plenty of energy left over at the end of the climb to respond to any uh, attacks that came up after the climb. And there were some attacks that did happen, um, as you'll probably see at the end of this particular climb here. Um, Innsbruck is uh, known for this one climb. It, it doesn't really have, um, at least this particular course, any other notable features. It's relatively flat, a couple of bumps here and there. Um, but as far as tactics is concerned, this is really the one element that can differentiate some stronger riders and particularly stronger climbers from those that um, perhaps are weaker uh, riders or those that are looking to um, take advantage more of the draft element on the flatter portions of the course. And again, as we crested the top, you can see that there were some folks that um, tried to advance or to uh, make an immediate attack, which is a great strategy uh, for this particular course. Um, however, it's important if you sense that attack is coming on to uh, make sure you jump on their wheel because um, that really gives you an advantage in terms of um, being able to conserve energy, particularly as uh, the downhill portion after the, the uphill is one of the fastest portions of the course. And if you can carry some draft through those sections, um, you're certainly going to be saving a lot of energy over those that are on the front. Um, and so that's what we're seeing here. Um, in this particular uh, portion of the race, it's a very later portion of the race, um, we're down to just a few individuals after um, one of those final climbs, including myself. And as we are down to these last few individuals in our particular group, we're coming down the back straight, as I would call it, in Inbrook's course. Um, to the right is the river. Um, this is also the portion that has the sprint banner section. And we're within the last three minutes of the race at this point um, with a group of two other individuals that were very cooperative. Uh, both took turns uh, doing the pulls um, as we're coming down really essentially to the last section of the race. There aren't any appreciable hills at this point. Um, attacks uh, at this point probably less likely unless uh, one of these individuals happen to be significantly stronger than anticipated. I think, however, uh, we all found ourselves to be similarly matched and so uh, we worked cooperatively uh, to hold off, particularly the, the group that we left behind on that last climb um, so that we could keep some distance between us and them. And we were able to do that through the end of the race. Rounding that last bend and coming uh, over the bridge and into uh, Innsbruck itself. Uh, it's the final two minutes of the race. Um, I believe uh, at some point here in the last mile, I decided to go ahead and take my final pull, um, and I should be doing that shortly. I think that's what I'm about to do here at this particular point. And um, moving up to the front, wanted to make sure I had uh, left some energy for that final sprint. So I decided uh, to take my uh, last pull at about one mile out. Uh, that would give me about a half mile or so to rest up uh, for that final push. And uh, as we're seeing here, we're coming through one section of Innsbruck here. Uh, it's the final straight. Um, there's a slight bend to the left, and, uh, and that's when we're going to see the start uh, finish line. Um, I decided to uh, just kind of keep things steady uh, throughout the last two minutes, not really uh, ramping things up too fast, uh, just enough to keep, again, that, that group behind us uh, off our backs. And uh, so here is that last pull I was mentioning, um, just trying to keep it at or about uh, four watts per kilogram or a little bit less, um, uh, do my pull. And I didn't uh, make that pull terribly long, it was just, just enough to be... Uh, appropriate, nothing uh, too extensive, and I go ahead and give my elbow flick and get out of the way. Uh, these two individuals, however, decided that it was probably best for them to go ahead and attack at that point, and that was a wise tactic on their part. 
um, as you can see, they're, they're starting to pull up, and we're starting to go ahead, and we're pushing now over 300 watts, uh, over 400 watts here. At this point, we can see the start-finish line, and I realized at this point, I got to go ahead and do my sprint. So it's all out at this point, as you can see. Uh, I'm well behind uh, the other two riders, so have some ground to make up, and thankfully, I was able to make up that ground and cross the finish line for um, a decent time, and very, very thankful with that. Uh, it was a great result. Really enjoyed it. I had a great time. I hope you did as well, and looking forward to the next Zwift Community League race when it happens. I'd like to participate. It certainly was a good experience for me. Uh, for those of you who uh, like this video, go ahead and just like or subscribe at the bottom, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.